This video is one of a series produced by SeamlessAccess.org to educate and inform users about the work we're doing to deliver a simpler, privacy-preserving access experience. Seamless Access represents and comprises a diverse community of organizations and individuals. My name is Tim Lloyd. In addition to serving on the governance and outreach committees for Seamless Access, I also run LibLinks, a company specializing in identity and access for online resources. In this video, I start with the basics and explain how federated authentication works. Federated authentication is an extension of single sign-on that allows you to use your institutional credentials to authenticate access to a wide variety of online resources that are provided by third parties outside your organization. If you're unfamiliar with the term federated authentication, you may recognize the name Shibboleth instead. Shibboleth is an open source software commonly used to implement federated authentication in research and education institutions. Let's start with a simple analogy. Bob runs a conference booth that provides books to anyone who studies at a subscribing institution. Amy comes up to the booth and says, hi, can I have a book? Bob says, sure, and asks her if she's at a subscribing institution. Amy says that she's a student at ABC College. However, Bob doesn't know Amy, so he needs to verify that she's registered with ABC College. Luckily, he has a phone book where he can look up someone who can help him. In the case of ABC College, the person to talk to is Carol. Bob calls Carol to ask if she can confirm that the person at his booth is a student at ABC College. Carol asks Bob to pass the phone to the student so she can talk to her directly. Carol talks to Amy and is able to confirm that she's a valid student at ABC College. Amy passes the phone back to Bob so that Carol can confirm to him that she's a student at ABC College. Now Bob would ideally like to know the student's name so that he can learn more about her interests and recommend other books to her in future. However, ABC College's policy is not to release student names, and so Carol can't provide Bob with any additional information on the student. Bob has now verified that the student in front of him is at ABC College. Bob gives Amy her book, and also gives her a bright green badge to wear that says, I'm with ABC College. Bob tells her that if the other booths see that badge, it'll save some time as she won't need to tell every booth which institution she studies at. This simple scenario is actually very close to how federated authentication works. Bob is the service provider, or SP, that needs to check a visitor's institutional affiliation before providing access to services. His phone book is an identity federation, a trusted list that details how to talk to a set of vetted institutions and vendors. Examples of identity federations in higher education include InCommon in the United States and the UK Access Management Federation. Carol is the identity provider, or IDP, the institution's federated authentication service that confirms a visitor's identity. And while our characters in this scenario speak English, in reality, Bob, Carol and the Federation communicate using a language called Security Assertion Markup Language, or SAML for short. Finally, the badge that Bob gives to Amy is what Seamless Access is really about, making it easier for Amy to deal with other service providers. It's important to note that Carol, as the identity provider, was in control of Amy's identity and opted not to share any information about Amy with Bob, such as her name. All Bob got was confirmation that Amy was definitely affiliated with ABC College and, as Bob trusts the phone book, he trusts Carol is the right person to confirm that. In federated authentication, identity providers control user privacy by deciding whether or not to share extra user information, known as attributes, with a service provider. An attribute might be affiliation information, such as a department or role, or more personal information, such as a name or email address. In this example, no attributes were shared. To summarize, in this video we covered 
federated authentication, which is a technology used to authenticate access to external resources. We distinguish between service providers, such as publishers, and identity providers, such as research and education institutions. We identified the role that identity federations play in linking service providers and identity providers. We explained how seamless access makes federated authentication more seamless by allowing service providers to determine a user's preferred identity provider without the additional friction of asking the user. And we introduced the concept of user attributes as a means of preserving privacy.